What is up and is going on guys, Simpsy here and welcome back to another episode of my FIFA 14 QPR career mode on the Xbox One Season 3. So let's get straight and right into it. In today's episode, we have two matches, the first of which is against Tottenham Hotspur and it is the semi-finals of the Capital One Cup. And then halfway through this episode, we do have the uh, the transfer deadline day, the, ch the January. And then later on in the episode, we have an away match against Chelsea. So it's going to be very interesting to see how that develops. Now, guys, we do have some transfer negotiations with Bolton for Stefan on Beer's services. And uh, I did do some notifications. Uh, sorry, not notifications. Transfer negotiations uh, with Southampton. I didn't show it on camera because it was a pretty drawn-out, long process. But we do manage to sign Jay Rodriguez. Now, I did obviously sign another left mid, um, Carrillo. But I really wanted to see... I really enjoyed Jay in my... Um, in my Southampton career, man. He can play as a left mid and a striker, 75 overall. He's still quite young, and I do believe I picked him up quite cheap. And very much in the same boat as Kelly and Saki, I just really wanted to buy another player to kind of strengthen our... Um, to strengthen our, our squad just to give us a little bit more depth. Now, we did actually sell on beer to Bolton, and uh, that's the funds we got allocated. So, it's it's been a long, drawn-out process with Stefan on beer. We've been loaning him out many a time. But we do have an uh, offer here from PSG for Danny Welbeck. Maybe PSG could be <laughs> trying to gobble up another one of our strikers. But we do have a surprising transfer offer here from Junior Hoylet from FC Bayern. They asked for $12 million for the player, and I was like, there's no way I'm selling him, he's a fantastic player, but if I have to, it'll be $35 million, and uh, they went straight out and rejected the negotiations for that, and Paris Saint-Germain rejected as well. So, we do have a match against uh, Tottenham Hotspur coming up here, we actually are in the semi-finals, I don't usually give a shit, but uh, I, I, don't know, I, just want, I want to play, we're in the semis, we might as well, and it looks like if we do beat uh, Spurs here today. We're going to be playing Chelsea in the final, which will be very interesting to see. Versing our former player uh, Edison Cavani, and Sherl has been playing spectacularly in the Bundesliga. Uh, sorry, uh, in the Barclays Premier League. Um, but yeah, we have to have a match against Tottenham. The last time we versed Tottenham, we ended up winning three two. That was a really surprising match. Uh, it, it took it took until the 80th minute to score a goal. This is in the Premier League, of course, and uh, the the game ended up finishing 3-2, obviously my way, which was very, very interesting to say the least, um, but in that match, uh, I feel like Roberto Saldado and Gomez didn't really show up at all, but we ended up winning 3-2, still a good win, but uh, Sebastian Rode on the edge of the box here, whips in an absolute belter at the Tottenham Hotspur goalkeeper, but manages to deflect it just wide. Cristiano Ronaldo finds Sergio, gets the double back pass, and he nearly, nearly gets a goal there. He probably was pushing a little bit too much. He's big chest uh, really did put it wide, but De Bruyne on the ball here, running down the wing, he absolutely smashes it, and unfortunately, it does hit the post, but Cristiano Ronaldo there, the poacher, comes up to pick up the crumbs, and I really, I don't even know how we even got to that, that came out of nowhere to make it 1-0 just before the 22nd minute, Cristiano Ronaldo scoring another goal and adding it to his immaculate goal scoring record for this season, but I was really disappointed from De Bruyne, he really did manage to pull it quite significantly across the other side, he managed to hit the post, but uh, Cristiano Ronaldo there was to was there to pick up the crumbs. Cristiano Ronaldo having his own shot, just going wide of the crossbar, but uh, Tottenham Hotspur defense really wasn't covering him all that well. But De Bruyne manages to find Sergio, and Sergio whips it into Ronaldo just before half time, but the header just goes wide, and uh, I'll give Sergio, I'll give uh, Cristiano Ronaldo a bit of a break there. But uh, Andre Carrillo running down the wing. Now he that was a really, really nice piece of play. Manages to cut back in, and he has like 90 or so dribbling. It's absolutely fantastic. But the shot does go wide. Junior Hoylet, possibly the new Bayern Munich player. Well, earlier in the week he was likely linked to him, but he manages to smash it past the Tottenham Hotspur defense. And uh, really shocking celebration. I don't know why I did that celebration. To be quite honest, I fucking hate it. But 2-1 against Tottenham in the semi-finals of the Capital One Cup. But Tottenham Hotspur, like I said, they do have a fantastic uh, striking potential. And unfortunately, a miscommunication finds Ericsson to have a shot on target, nearly conceding a goal. But uh, we end up winning 2-0 over Tottenham. 
Hoyler and Cristiano Ronaldo picking up one goal each. Now, I just want to quickly recap the last episode, if you haven't gone and watched it. Uh, I ended up winning 4-0 over Liverpool. Uh, Sergio Aguero picking up two goals, Cristiano Ronaldo picking up one, and Junior Hoylet as well. So, guys, I was just actually quickly going through here and looking for the pre-contracts. Obviously, some of these players weren't turning, I think it's 23 year later to sign them, like Thorgan Hazard. He does have six months remaining on his contract, but unless he turns 33, we can't... I, I think it's 33 or 34. 30 I can't quite remember off the top of my head. But uh, Thomas Ince, a player we can sign on a pre-contract. Um, so we're, we're trying to get some pre-contracts for next season if we do do season four of the QPR crew mode. I'm pretty much, I'm very much undecided at the moment. But there's another another Australian, actually, Ben Hollard. Uh, but Thomas Ince looks like it would be a good signing. Um, it is 23 because we're trying to sign him. But, uh, guys, if you haven't... Uh, also, there was only one match in that last episode because the main man we did sign was Andre Carilia. Now, I just want to read out some of these stats for this guy. We He's a right wing. He obviously can play as a left wing as well. He's 24 years of age. We bought him for $18 million from Sporting. He's obviously a Peru international. He's got four star. He's got three star weak foot, four star skills. He's an 83 overall, and he's roughly worth. It was, he's worth 20 million. So we did buy him. We did buy him two million cheaper than what he's worth. I really think he's going to be a fantastic um, improvement to the squad. Uh, Begovic actually signed for Chelsea, which is quite interesting. He left Stoke City. Nazri's gone to Barca. Uh, Mayuka the bazooka <laughs> from Southampton has gone to Roma. Um, Roma have actually brought in a lot of striking potential. They brought in De Jong earlier in the, uh, the season after they sold Strutman. Um, what are some other transfers here? Papadopoulos, uh, Papadopoulos has actually signed for Liverpool on a pre-contract. Um, but uh, David De Gea has gone out to Sevilla, which was a real surprising signing for Sevilla, to say the least. I thought I would have thought he would have gone to a bigger club. Looks like Urzu and Vidal could quite possibly be joining Manchester City, which would be a really big threat. But Eric, um, I don't know. We did sign this guy on a pre-contract, 75 overall, 26 years of age. Um, obviously, Jay Rodriguez is a better player than him, but uh, we're probably going to be letting him go. Um, we, he just couldn't fit into the squad, and even in the rotation. It was disappointing, but uh, we might be selling him this season. But we do have a, a pre-contract here for Thomas Ince, Kevin Trapp, and uh, Ben Holloran. Now, we don't have enough money to sign all three players, but I thought, okay, firstly, we need a new goalkeeper. Um, and uh, I'd rather I'd rather get more... I'd rather get a goalkeeper and uh, another player than just Thomas Ince. I know Thomas Ince, Thomas Ince, he plays for Blackpool. He's a fan favourite. A lot of people like him in career mode, but I'd much rather have two players, and he's in Australia as well. But if we do sell Eric here, we might be able to free up the funds uh, for Thomas Ince. But I did want... I've been looking at actually... I was looking at actually buying Trap. Um, because obviously Julius Cesar is going down in stats, and uh, we do need a replacement keeper. Because Zuti, Zuti is all right, but we need, we do need a backup. But we do sell uh, Eric here for 2.5 million. Well, we actually got allocated 2.5 million to Newcastle United. Hopefully, he can have a better career instead of staying on the the reserves essentially. But this guy, I've been trying to get his services. Uh, for a long time, but we do get an offer here for Sergio Aguero from Tottenham Hotspur. That that's a joke. We would never sell Sergio Aguero to Tottenham, especially for forty three million. You got to be laughing. I really only sell my players if I can get an outstanding, and I mean outstanding, uh, transfer fee, which Barca and both PSG. But uh, from the the selling of er er Eric, we were able to sign Thomas in. So there's three new players, but we if we do do season four of the QPR. Career mode, there's three players that we get to play on for free. And also, Joe Hart, I didn't even realize that he was on a pre-contract. But I preferred to get uh, Trapp because he's quite uh, quite younger. Still looking at Thorgan Hazard, whether or not he's going to uh, turn uh, turn a little bit older, turn to 23 years old. Um, obviously, we're still waiting on... Uh, what's his name? Sterling. Um... But, uh, yeah, we're just looking for more, more contracts here. No other transfers there. Oh, fucking Dumbia. That's a very interesting signing. So, Satan Dumbia went from CSKF Moscow. He went to Bayern Leverkusen, and now he's signed for Wolfsburg? It's very odd. Going from another mid-table Bundesliga club to another. But we do manage to sign Abraham um. 
hum, hum, mood. <laughs> He's got five star weak foot, four star skills. 56 overall for 500,000. I think that's a pretty ch a pretty good bargain. Obviously, he's not as good as uh, Troanelio, who's got five star weak foot, five star skills, and uh, we did ob we did overpay two million for him. So we're coming to the final hours of the January transfer window. We've got four hours left, and there is a signing coming up, which I found quite surprising. But uh, obviously, Bone. Yeah, that's actually another surprising. Bone is actually signed for Fulham. But uh, you'll know you'll know what I'm talking about when you see it. But guys, don't forget we do have another episode, another match in today's episode. We are actually versing Chelsea. They are unbeaten at the moment, so maybe we could break their unbeaten streak. Now, the main signing I was talking about was Alexandra Pato actually signed for Arsenal, which I found was quite interesting. So that's another threat up front. They do have De Dzeko. Uh, they still have Giroud as well. So a good signing for Arsenal, uh, to say the least. We've got some youth players here. I stopped uh, recruiting youth players um, in my first season because I think we had an, we had a, we had a plenty, and uh, also I, I felt like after we bought Tranilio, we're probably better off searching for more. But we do have some potential job openings here: Liverpool, Napoli, Napoli Arsenal. Uh, have some potential job openings. So, uh, like I said, guys, I don't usually go and sign them, but I think it's an interesting to see who guys who are offering up jobs. So we do have a match against Chelsea here. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see. Um, Schurler is actually second in 15 goals, so it's the second versus the first top goal scorer. <laughs> Roberto Saldado is actually second, but like I said, guys, Chelsea are under undefeated. And uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how that develops. But, yeah, Edison Cavani has really dipped down. Uh, even Osvaldo for Southampton is actually ahead of him. But uh, some of my players were a little bit knackered for this match. So I did actually want to do a little bit of rotations. I don't like doing that, but they were pretty knackered after that match against Liverpool. So I will be bringing Danny Welbeck on as a striker. And Frederick Sorensen is actually a little bit knackered as well so we're going to be rotating in but I will bring on Sergio Aguero later on in the match along with my uh, my center back but uh, guys we are versing Chelsea at Stanford Bridge it's going to be an absolute classic and I can't wait to show you the results uh, at the end of it because if we can beat Chelsea here today maybe our title uh, contention will be a little bit stronger than what it is because we've been losing to teams like Everton but we've been beating Man United Liverpool Spurs, so it's very it's very up in the air. We obviously lost to um, who was it? Uh, Aston Villa. That was it. We lost to Aston Villa and we drew against Fulham. So we're beating the big teams, but we're losing against the small teams, which is very disappointing. But Danny Welbeck there lets fly, and Kevin De Bruyne is actually versing his former club, which is very interesting to see. Hopefully Cavani uh, doesn't bury us like he did in the one nil win at the start of the season, but Courtois with a top-notch save there. Danny Welbeck finds Cristiano Ronaldo and whips it back to Danny Welbeck. Unfortunately, couldn't quite get the shot off. Oh, my God. That was a very, very lucky save there off the rebound from the post. That would have been a good goal for him, but uh, Sebastian Rode ends up getting a shot on, and Junior Hoyle is there to whip it back in, but we were really brutalizing Chelsea's defense in this match, but Courtois was really, really trying to save them, and so was... Uh, Fucking David Lewis in this game. But Cristiano Ronaldo is trying to get his shot off. We do manage to bring one back just after half time, just after the 50th minute. And uh, it was an all right goal, I guess. Uh, nice cut back in. It actually was uh, Andre to pick it up. So the newly signed sporting player. Actually, it was the two former sporting players linking up together to create that goal. But Danny Welbeck cutting back inside there, trying to find De Bruyne, and De Bruyne smashes it to score against his former club. I have been criticising De Bruyne's goal-scoring ability, but to be quite honest, I bought him more for his um, attacking positioning and also feeding it to Cristiano Ronaldo and Sergio. Like Out of those three, I don't care who's put him in the back of the net. We're obviously not lacking in our ability to score goals. I forgot Christian Benteke plays for his fucking team. Absolutely smashes it at Zut, and it was a pretty solid save and the clearance. But guys, we end up winning 2-0 against Chelsea. We really did dominate them, and we ended their winning streak. So guys, thank you very much for watching. If you watched all the way through, I really do appreciate it. Make sure to leave a like on this video to support my channel, and make sure to go out and have a fantastic rest of your day after you watch this video. So guys, thank you very much. Goodbye.